Hello everyone. In the previous video, we have seen what is App Service Plan and what is App Service and how to create them through Azure Portal. If you have missed watching that video, please watch that video first before this because this video is the continuation of the previous video. I'll provide the link to that video in the description section. Please check it out. In this video, we are going to see what are the different features that we have in App Service and how to deploy a basic Python application in App Service and how to access that application. So let's get started. So currently I am in the Azure portal. So this is the web app, Python hyphen application, is the web app that we have created in the previous video that uses this demo hyphen ASP app service plan. So this is the default domain that we are going to get when we create this web app. If you click on this domain, you will see a default page. So since we haven't uploaded any code into this web app, we are going to get the default page. Once we upload our code into this web app, we are going to get the response from our application. We see all those things in a bit, but uh, for now, let's go back to the Azure portal. And if you click on the deployment slots under the deployment section, you will see one deployment slot. This is the production deployment slot. So what is a deployment slot? Let's say you have created a basic application and deployed that application in this web app. By default, that application would be published into this production slot. And users can access that application using the production domain. So this is the domain uh, with which the users can access the code deployed in this production slot and let's assume after three months you have added two new features to your application and you want to test that features before users access these features then what you can do you can create a staging slot so here there is an option called add slot if you click on the add slot and here you can give a name to the slot let's say i am giving a staging here and here, if you see, you are getting a different domain for your staging slot. And the domain uh, naming convention is uh, the web app name Python hyphen application hyphen the name of the slot that we are going to give here staging dot azure websites.net. So this is the domain that you are going to get for this slot. So click on add, it would create a new staging slot. A staging slot has been created. Here you can see a new slot that has been added. So what you can do, you can publish your code to this new staging slot. You can test your application. You can validate your application from end to end. And if everything works fine, you can click on swap here. You can mention the source and target slots and you can click on swap. So when you click on swap, it will swap the source and target slots domain and the user can access your application with the production slot as well. So in this way, you can create a multiple slots for your requirements. For example, for development, for staging, for testing and everything. So once everything is working fine, you can swap with the production slot. So the next question is, how many slots can you create? This depends on the app service plan you choose. If you choose a basic plan, you will not get an option for creating any staging slot, not even one staging slot. But if you choose a premium plan, you will get an option to create up to 20 slots. And if you choose a standard plan, you will get an option to create up to 5 slots. So based on your requirement, you can choose app service plan and you will get the respective slots. And if you click on the deployment center under the deployment slots, so this is the place where you can integrate your source code. If you click on the drop down here, uh, you can see uh, you can integrate with GitHub, Bitbucket, local git and azure Web. and if you come down a bit on the left 
to click on the scale up app service plan you can see a different app service plans here if you think at any point of time uh, the app service plan that you choose earlier is not sufficient for your web app you can upgrade to the premium v2 app service plan or let's say if the app service plan that you choose earlier is higher than your requirement then you can choose lower app service plan for example standard or basic and then you can downgrade your app service plan so in the scale out page you can see the current instance is one and the maximum instance that we can scale up to are 30 and we have 16 gb memory and the current plan that we have choose is premium v3 and if you come down you will see a different methods for scaling out options so if you think the current instance one is not required you can increase the instance count here manually uh, based on your need and you can click on save so based on that the instance count will be increased and if you think uh, you need to mention any rules and based on the rule the instance should be auto scaled you can click on rule based and click on manage rules so this is a place where you can provide your rules so if you click on custom auto scale and if you come down and select the option as a uh, scale based on a metric and if you click on the add rule here if you come down i'm selecting the dimension as select all and here uh, if you see i'm selecting the greater than 70 percent uh, if cpu percentage is greater than 70 percent then the instance count should be increased by one so in this way i can add the rules right so i can add as many rules as i want and i can save this auto scaling feature so you can see uh, the auto scaling has been updated uh, you can go back to the page so till now we have seen some features in the app service so now let's uh, go ahead and deploy a basic python application to this web app and see how we can access that application i'm using visual studio code editor for deploying python application in the web app that we have created we have created this basic python application using flask framework in the earlier videos for deploying the application in azure virtual machine now we are going to use the same code and see how we can deploy this in azure web app so here i'm importing the flask and i'm creating the instance of flask and i'm creating a sample endpoint using the route decorator and the instance of flask and i'm specifying the command for running our application and 8000 is a port on which our application will be up and running and if i open requirements.txt file so in python we will be specifying the packages required for our application to run in requirements.txt file so you need to use the same naming convention for deploying the application in app service as well so that app service will look into the requirements.txt and it will install all the packages that are present in the requirements.txt file so let me talk about app.pt so this is the main code file that we have for running our application if you name the main code file name as app.py or application.py then there is no need for us to explicitly mention the command for running our application in app service but if you specify the name of your main code file name other than the app.py or application.py for example if you name this main application code file name as python application or flask web api or flask web application something like that right other than the app.py or application.py then we need to explicitly mention the command for running our application in app service so let's see this in few minutes while we are deploying right so let's see how we can deploy this in web app so in order to deploy your application to azure app service you need to install app service extensions so click on the extensions on the left 
and search for Azure here. So you will get many services offered by the Azure. So now we wanted to deploy our application in app service. So click on the app service and install the Azure app service extension. And click on the Azure resources as well and click on the extensions. So once you install both the extensions, click on the Azure icon on the left. And here you will get an option to sign into your account. So in my case, I have already signed into my Azure account. So I am able to see the subscription pay as you go. So in your case, if you sign in to your Azure account, you will be able to see in your subscription. So if I expand this subscription, you will see all the services. So if I expand app services, you will see the web app that we have created Python hyphen application. And if I expand deployment slots, you can see the staging slot that we have created. So let's go ahead and deploy our application to the Python hyphen application web app. So open the Azure extension, right click on the Python application web app and click on deploy to web app. We have to choose the folder and click on yes. This will deploy our application to the Azure Web App directly. So you can click on deploy. So here it is saying deploying to Python hyphen application. You can click on output window. So this will show the logs of deploying our application to the Azure Web App. It would take around two to three minutes for deploying our application to the web app. So now you can see deployment to Python hyphen application is completed. So you can see all the logs here. And at the end, you will see a deployment to Python hyphen application is completed. Now I'm in the Azure portal. So this is the web app that we have created. So if you click on the default domain now we are able to see the response from our endpoint so we are able to access our application using the default domain so now we have deployed our application to the web and we are able to access that uh, using the default domain now let's say uh, we have created one more endpoint right for example, I'll copy the same uh, endpoint and create a new endpoint with the path as slots. And let me rename the method as slots. And here, instead of hello from Flask, let me give a response as hello from staging slot. So let's say we have created a new endpoint in our application. And before deploying this application into the production slot, we want to deploy this in the staging slot. How we can do this? So we can do in the same way how we can deploy to the production slot. You can navigate onto the left, onto the Azure icon. You can open the web app that we have created. You can open the deployment slot. You can see the staging deployment slot that we have. You can right click on this one and you can Click on deploy to slot. Specify path. Click on deploy. So now we are going to deploy our updated application into the staging slot before moving that into the production slot. Now we can see 
uh, the deployment to Python application staging is completed. So let's navigate to the Azure portal and see whether we are able to access the application or not. So I'm in the Azure portal. If you navigate to the deployment source here, since we have deployed our application to the staging slot, let's go to the deployment slots and click on the staging slot. So this is the uh, staging deployment slot and this is the domain that we got for the staging deployment slot, python-application-staging. So if you click on this domain, you will get the uh, endpoint for the root path. If you enter slash slots, you will get hello from staging slot. So this is the extra endpoint that we have added to our application and deployed to the staging slot. But if you go to the production slot domain and if you enter slash slots and click on enter here, this won't give any response for us because the extra endpoint that we have added for our application, we have deployed the code into the staging slot, but not to the production slot. And if you think that this endpoint is working fine and you want to swap the staging slot domain with the production slot domain, then you can go to the deployment slots and you can click on swap here. So this is the deployment slot page. If you click on swap, so you need to specify the source and the target. So the source is the staging slot and the target is the production slot. So if you click on swap here, it would swap the source and target deployment slots. So here you can see performance swap between the slot staging and the slot production. So it would take some time. Yeah, now you can see successfully completed the swap between slot staging and the slot production. So if I go to the same URL, this is the production URL. Now if I refresh the page, now I can see the endpoint is working. But if I go to the staging environment and if I click on the refresh, you are not going to get the response because we have swapped the URL. So this is how it works. And the one more thing that I want to show here is, remember um, in the beginning, we have seen that the main code file of our application should be app.py or application.py. If our application main file is other than that app.py or the application.py then if you go to the configuration and click on the general settings if you come down here is the place where you can specify the command for running your application so if you specify your main code file name as uh, let's say a uh, python web app right so then you have to mention here as python space python web app dot py so this will be the command for starting your application but if you specify your main code file name as app dot py then there is no need for you to mention the command here. if you think you are getting some information from my videos please like the video and subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss out on my next videos thank you